Stoichiometry. It's a name you're not familiar with or a phrase you're not familiar with yet, but when you hear stoichiometry or when somebody says something about stoichiometry and you understand what stoichiometry is, you're finally in the know. Okay. Um, up until now, you've heard me use the, the word stoichiometry, but I haven't really described what it is. It's everything that we've done so far. Everything. It involves writing chemical formulas, balancing those chemical formulas, writing the chemical equation, balancing the chemical equation, and then the moles that we just took a test over, we get to use the moles again. It is one great time. So finally, finally, we are doing some real chemistry. It finally gets exciting now. So when we talk about stoichiometry, it's the quantitative description of the proportions by moles. And that's huge. Because again, when you look at your periodic table, even though they have different masses on the periodic table for different substances, they all those masses represent for a mole. So oh, the equalizer is getting things to moles. If you leave it as like 5 grams of oxygen and 5 grams of carbon, we don't have equal proportions. We want equal proportions, especially when we're doing stoichiometry. When we balance the we were actually balancing for the number of moles. You just didn't realize it. And I think we may have said, okay, well, that's how many molecules we have or how many atoms we have or how many particles. But the real truth was it was how many moles were being represented. So now that we know where the mole is, we can jump into stoichiometry, which is good. Um, there are four steps for every stoichiometry problem. And if you learn those four steps, life is going to be very, very easy for you. Um, some people even say stoichiometry is the bookkeeping of chemistry. I'm not giving you those four steps yet. Just be patient there. Actually, let me give you the four steps. That makes a little more sense. And I'll be honest with you, where it's at in your notes is not where I would want it to be. So let's forward here a little bit. Turn and on page five. This All right, here. These, okay. So in your notes on page five, here are the four steps that we're going to do for every single stoichiometry problem. No matter how hard, how easy, how complex, how simple. Okay. Step one, always write a balanced equation. Okay. So in that balanced equation, we'll have to make sure that the chemical formula has the correct charges or the correct structure if it's a non-metal with a non-metal. And then we have to balance out the number of atoms on both sides. So that's what we did before moles. So write a balanced equation. Step two, write what you know, in other words, what was given, and change whatever that is into moles. Sometimes it'll be grams, sometimes it'll be something else, okay? Lots of other things there. Step three, we're going to use the mole ratio, and actually we get the mole ratio from our balanced equation, and you'll see that when we work out some of the problems. And again, that's why I have it here, obtained from the balanced equation. And then the last step is we're going to convert whatever those moles are to the desired unit. So sometimes, excuse me, it might be moles, so leave it as is, might be grams, might be milliliters, okay? So there's a lot of things that we could do on these. So these are the four basic steps for stoichiometry. You have these four steps down, um, things are gonna be a lot easier for you. So right, let's, let's talk about the first thing. When we do some stoichiometry and we're going from a mole to mole um, relationship, which is pretty easy, I like doing those, and you're gonna like those a lot as well. One thing that we have to realize is that when we are doing these calculations, we are in a perfect world. Just like with the lab that you turned in, the hydrate lab, none of you should have had a whole number for your water. You should have had some decimal amount because again, it's a lab situation. You don't get perfect results. Sometimes there's still water embedded in that crystal even though you can't visibly see it. All right, there's a lot of things that are going on. If we were to crushed up the crystal, we probably could have got access to that water. However, whenever we're doing calculations, it's the theoretical maximum. It's a perfect situation. All the chemicals react. They all do what they're supposed to do, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Um, when we talk about a chemical formula, it may s represent for a single atom, a single molecule, or a mole 
of the substance. So again, that coefficient can represent quite a few things. So don't freak out about that. When we talk about ratios, we're actually looking at the coefficients and we can treat it as such. In other words, if I look at these two equations here, where I have two magnesiums with plus one oxygen yields two magnesium oxides, is this incorrect to have this, where I have a four to two to four ratio? No, the, the ratios are still the same. However, this is more accepted. We would always want the small sort number ratio for our balanced equation. But when we talk about looking at these coefficients, now we can put some values with this. We can say, oh yeah, we have two magnesium atoms react with one oxygen molecule to make two magnesium oxide molecules. Or we can take two moles, one mole, two mole. Doesn't matter. Okay. So those are our ratios. That's what those coefficients truly represent. Uh, the balanced equation gives us the mole ratio between the reactants, the things we start with, and the products, the things we finish with. And here's an example I'm not going to go over. You can take a look at that. It'll make a lot more sense once we start doing some problems on the board. Um, here's an one. <laughs> Sorry. It says ammonia, which is NH3, hopefully you'll know that by the time you get to AP, is synthesized from hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas. Okay, so let's write that down first. So what does synthesize mean? Let's brief, go back to even before the winter break. What's that mean? Makes combined. Good. So if it's synthesized, that means it's formed. So we'll have NH3. Okay. So it is synthesized, is produced, is generated, whatever you want to do. And it's synthesized from hydrogen gas. How do I represent hydrogen gas? Very good. And nitrogen gas? N2. Good. So if it ends in gen or ion, it's still diatomic. Now, here's a trick, or a skill, whatever you want to call it. I always like to write what I know above. That way I don't have to go back to the question like 14 times and go, do I know how much of this I have? Do I know how? Okay. If you write it down above, then it'll save you all the hassle of having to go back and reread it. So it says that 3.8 moles... 3.8 moles of nitrogen uh, reacts with hydrogen gas. How much hydrogen do we have? Doesn't say, which is nice, because later on I'll tell you what the amount is, and then we'll have to do another equation. So for today it's nice, and you'll look back at this and go, I, I wish I had those days again. Uh, how many moles of ammonia will be produced? So question mark moles. All right. So here we go. Now I don't have to look at the question again. So I know I have 3.8 moles of nitrogen. I want to know how many moles of ammonia is going to be produced. What is step one in stoichiometry? Write a balanced equation. Is that balanced? Sometimes it is. No. No, not even close. So we have three hydrogens. We have two here. A three there. And a two there. How are we looking now? Balanced. We're balanced. Okay. So step one's done. Step two says take what's given. In other words, we know how much nitrogen we have. We have no idea how much ammonia. We don't know how much hydrogen because it wasn't given. So we're going to take what we know and start with that. So we have 3.8 moles of nitrogen. Step two says to do what? Change the given to... It's done. Yay. Step two is already done for us. Okay. So we don't have to do anything with that. Step three says use the mole ratio. Now what the mole ratio is, it's based on the coefficients between the thing that we start with and the thing that we're finishing with or we're comparing to. Okay. And again, based on dimensional analysis, we have moles of nitrogen here. So the mole ratio actually does a nice job and it eliminates what we start with and it goes to the unit that we're looking for. And so does dimensional analysis. So if we have moles of nitrogen, we're going to write moles of nitrogen down here, and we're looking for our ammonia, so we're going to write moles of ammonia up here. Okay. Now, what numbers do we put in front of these? You have to go back to your balanced equation. So what do we have in front of the ammonia? Two. And the number we have in front of nitrogen is a one. This is our mole ratio. Based on our balanced equation, for us to generate two moles of nitrogen, I'm sorry, ammonia, we need one mole of nitrogen. 
Now it's assumed that we do have hydrogen. We haven't talked about limiting reactants yet. That's down the road, not today. But we have to have some hydrogen. But it's a one to two ratio based on our balanced equation. So that means that the moles of nitrogen are gone. And if we were to stop right there, we would know how many moles of ammonia we had. Okay? So step one, write a balanced equation. Step two, change what was given in the moles. It was already done for us here. Step three, we're going to use the mole ratio to cancel out the units of the thing that we started with to get to the units that we're looking for. Now, what's step four? Go to the desired unit. What's the question wanting? Moles. What are we at? So sometimes those steps are already done for you, or completed for you. Wait, what? I know, right? What was that last thing you just did? So the desired unit for this question, it wants to know how many moles of ammonia. We're already in moles of ammonia. So, so here's my suggestion. Go ahead. Times two. Yep. Now here's my suggestion. And I said this when we were doing the mole chapter last time, that you didn't have to write these here. I would highly advise you write them here, especially in the mole ratio. That way you're going to be able to keep things in order and keep them in check. Because if you just had mole and mole here, you may not remember which is which or who is who here. So do include what they are, okay, for stoichiometry. So what is that, 7.6? Yeah. Okay. Now, in your answer, you can just do that. So example number two. I know, I know. Whoa, yeah. All right, so glucose decomposes into its elemental components. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen gas. Okay. In a decomposition reaction. Calculate the number of moles of glucose. So we're going to do number of moles. Uh, glucose needed to form 22.4 moles of hydrogen. Yeah. Okay. And that's all we have. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, I was getting ahead of myself here. Okay. So the question wants to know how many moles of this, and we're given moles of hydrogen. We don't know anything about carbon. We don't know anything about oxygen. Better yet, we don't care. All right. Step one: Is this balanced? So we have six carbons, or six there, 12 of those, so we need a, uh-oh, we have six, whew, got lucky. Uh -uh. All right, so now our equation's balanced, we only need a one here, correct? All right, so step one, write a balanced equation. Step two, write down what you know and convert that to moles. So 22.4 moles of hydrogen, do we need to do anything to that? Good. Step two is done. Step three, let's use the mole ratio. And here's another thing. On the last problem, we knew the moles of the stuff that we started with, and we were looking for the moles of the thing that we finished with. It doesn't matter. As long as we know one and we don't know the other, it can be on either side. Okay, so don't freak out and go, how are we going to know? You'll know. All right, so moles of hydrogen should go where? On the bottom, because we want to cancel it out. And what are we looking for? Moles of glucose. Okay. What numbers go in front of those? One and six. Good. So again, your mole ratio is based on your balance equation. That's why you have to balance your equation first. Okay? okay. Yes. Um, like on the second step, mm -hmm. when you say you don't have to do anything to it, mm -hmm. when are you going to have to? Example three. Or example four. Um, or example five. Or six. So, when the, so the good times are about to end. Sorry. It's, so it's when they're grams. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or something else, which we won't talk about today. I'll even give you molarity. Oh my yeah. But not today. All right. Um, so step one, write a balance equation. Step two, change what was given into moles. Step three, use the mole ratio so we can cancel out moles of hydrogen in this case. And the question wants us to go to moles of our glucose or there. So whatever 22.4 divided by 6 is. 3.73. What is it? 3.73. 3.73. And that's moles of glucose. Okay. You like it?
like this? It's not too bad. The ones are part of your homework. Um, specify an actual amount, and this is called mole to mass or mass to mole. So again, we did this on the last test where I gave you a mass and I asked you to convert to moles. You'll do the same thing. Okay, so those, the tricks, or I'm sorry, the skills that you learned on the last test, we're going to use it for this as well. Um, and then just another statement here, stoichiometry involves measuring or calculating the amounts of elements or compounds uh, involved in the chemical change, obviously. Okay. So we'll do these examples and trust me, it'll make a lot more sense here. There are the four steps again. I need to move those. And some more examples. A synthesis reaction is performed in the lab where 14.6 moles of potassium Potassium. How do I represent potassium? Good. So we have 14.6 moles of potassium. React with nitrogen. And we don't know anything about that yet. Somewhere down the road we will. To form, hey bud. No. Potassium nitride. Okay. Is that balanced? Charge on potassium is... <laughs> plus one and the charge on nitrogen minus three so what do we need to do good we need a three here all right so we have to balance the formula if it's not given to us and then once we balance the formula then we'll balance the equation <laughs> Beth you doing all right no that's all right are you on good drugs, please? Huh? Are you on any good drugs? No, I'm off on so. Oh. I don't think that will do this. Walk down. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 All right. So we have our thing balanced here. All right. And it also says, da, 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 calculate the mass of the potassium nitride, right? Wait, it's better. Did I not have it? So plus one. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I meant for this. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. So let's write down what we know about this. So it wants to know how many, calculate the mass in grams. So we'll go there. All right. So yeah, I always want to bounce the formula first, yeah. then I'll go and bounce I the equation. Like, uh, Alright, so step one, are we bounced? No. No. Put a three there. And two, no. Oh, we can't put a three there, can we? No. There's two on the other six. Two there. A six there. And now we're bounced. Okay. So step one, write a balanced equation. Step two. Ah, oh, bummer. Write down what we know, 14.6 moles of potassium. It's already in moles. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get to mass to mass here soon. I know. So step three is the mole ratio. So we don't want moles of potassium anymore, but we're looking for moles of potassium nitride. And what numbers go in front of those? Two and six. Now. Here's a good point, okay? I know that you're looking at that going, that's one over three. I agree. My advice is don't simplify these, okay? It's not wrong if you do. However, if you're simplifying and you come back, say, oh, I don't know, ready to study for the final exam and you haven't done any stoichiometry in a while and you look at these notes and you see a one and a three here and you come up here and you see a six and a two, it might confuse some of you. So it's okay because we did the small school number ratio within the balanced equation, okay? So just leave those numbers as is. That way you can quickly go back and go, oh yeah, two, six. Now that makes perfect sense, okay? But if you did put a one and a three there, I can't stop you, but it might lead to some confusion a little bit later on. All right, so since this wants mass, if we canceled units out now, then we're left with moles of potassium nitride. So what are we going to do with this unit? Move it down. 
And if we're looking for the molar mass, how many moles do we have here? Always make it one. The only time, okay, remember last topic where I said, okay, if you have mole within your problem, it's always going to be a one, not with stoichiometry. But once we start doing the factor labeling component, then it goes back to one. So if you're finding a mass for something, it's always for one mole of the substance. So we have three potassiums, which is 39.1, and one nitrogen, which is 14.01. Excuse me. Yeah, there's just the one within that, so we're not going to look at that. Because, again, what I would hope you wouldn't do is put a two here and then double everybody up. That's just more work. Now, if you did that, it's not wrong, but it, it might be a little confusing. All right, so let me get that out of there. So the molar mass of that is 131.31. And noticing on the test, a lot of you did that. That saved a lot of you, okay? So continue doing that because especially when this molar mass was down on the bottom, some of you didn't obey your calculator or didn't do the correct order of operation. And you did like six times three and the calculator took that and then once you hit plus, it put everything else on top. So make sure that if it's on the bottom, put it in parentheses or go ahead and do that first. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so around 639. Okay. So again, we get to use dimensional analysis, we get to balance equations, we get to write formulas, we get to use our moles. Oh, this is so fun. Number four. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, bring it up to me, Beth. Come on. All right, number four. When 575 grams of methane reacts with oxygen, Let's put our methane as 575 grams. Reacts with oxygen gas. Okay. In a combustion reaction, the products of a combustion reaction are, what are they? And? Good. Okay. Not this one. This one's pretty good. Okay, I got the number of moles of water vapor. So moles of that. And? That's all we need. All right, so we have our 575 grams, and our chemical formulas are written okay, so we don't have to do anything to that. Do we have the same number of atoms on both sides? No. So what is that, two? There's four over there, right? Oh, wow. See, I was nice. I won't be that nice on the homework. All right, so step one, we have a balanced equation. Step two, let's change what's given. Hey, look at that. 575 grams of methane into moles. Okay. So again, grams is up here, so we're going to go diagonally. So this is for one mole of methane. And again, other than the factor label, I'm sorry, other than the ratio step, okay, always make it one. One mole there. So 12.01 grams plus four times. And that's what? 16 point something. Yeah, let's get it real quick here. 16.042. Okay. So this is all step two. So we changed what was given in the moles. Step three, we're going to get rid of the unit moles of methane, and we're looking for moles of water. So what values go there? Yeah, so the one with the methane, the two with the water. What unit are we looking for? Moles. Whatever that is. 71 point what? I like it. Okay. So really it's it's just a continuation of what we did on the test yesterday, but with a bonus equation. Oh, yep, yep, my bad. I celebrated too soon. <laughs> Okay, 
So step three, use the mole ratio. Step four, convert to the desired unit. Or desired unit, desired unit is moles. All right. Twos are part of your homework. And then mass to mass. Okay. Going fast, I like it. Hopefully we can beat the breakfast card here. Um, and when we talk about mass to mass, we're going to start with a mass, convert to moles, and then once we have the mole ratio, we we'll convert back to mass. What is mass? What's the units for mass? Grams. Grams, good. Not moles. So there's only one blank here. I think. And then we'll do some examples. Example number five. Way to remove carbon dioxide from the air that must be recirculated, such as in a spacecraft cabin, is to react it, carbon dioxide, with lithium hydroxide to form lithium carbonate and water. All right, so we know what lithium carbonate and water look like. So we know we're going to try to form that. It wants to know how many grams of lithium hydroxide, how many grams of lithium hydroxide are needed for a six day, six day, three person, Three person, six day, three person mission. If in one day, <laughs> one day, uh, why do I have two decimal points there? Uh, one person exhales one kilogram of CO2. Woo! That is a good, oh, and I gave the answer, cover that up. Okay, so we're going to react this. So it wants to know how much lithium hydroxide. What's the question asking? How many grams? Of, yeah, how many lithium grams? Oh, okay. So we're going to find out how much of the carbon dioxide and put it up there. Okay. So we have six days, three people, and each day we have, sorry, each person, per person, okay, per person exhales one kilogram of carbon dioxide. Okay. Well, here, let's do this. How many people do we have? So how many per day? Three kilograms. Okay, so we have three kilograms of carbon dioxide per day, right? How many days do we have? Six. So six days. So it's just factor labeling. Cancel the days out. How many kilograms of carbon dioxide will we have in the cabin that needs to get changed? So that wasn't too bad. So we'll put our 18 kilograms up there. Okay. So you had to do a little work before we could begin. But well, actually, we need to do a little more. Are we balanced? Step one. No. We have two lithiums, so we'll put a two there. How are we looking now? We're good. So we have two hydrogens, two hydrogens. We have two oxygen, two oxygen. Sorry. Two plus two is four. Three plus one. Isn't that cool? So we're balanced. All right. So what do we know? 18 kilograms. I'm going to erase this. Anybody? So we start with what we know, which is our 18 kilograms. Yeah. Start with what you know. So we need to convert the kilograms into moles. How are we going to do that? <laughs> to grams, good. How many grams in a kilogram? Thousand, good. Or 10 to the 3. Just about everybody's got that. There were about two people that had that messed up the other day. And then we're going to have one mole of, what is it, carbon dioxide? So 12.01 grams plus 2 times 16, which is 44.01. So our kilograms are gone. Our grams are now gone. This, my friend, is all of step two. Step one, write a balanced equation. Step two, change what was given in the moles. Okay. Step three, we need to convert the moles of carbon dioxide into moles of what? Lithium. 
lithium hydroxide. What's my ratio here? Two. 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 Look at you, Kev. <laughs> Dang. Okay, so our moles of carbon dioxide are now gone, and we have moles of lithium hydroxide. But what unit are we looking for? Grams. Ooh, ah. Oh yeah, right small. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. When you watch this video again, when you watch the video again, you'll remember right small. So that's around 23.948 decimal mass of that. All right. And again, mole ratio is step three. <laughs> step four, convert to the desired unit. This is as ugly as it gets. Really? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Anybody get a number? Ow. I got 19,589. So we'll go 1.96 times 10 to what, 4? And that would be, if you're just keeping score at home, lithium hydroxide. Okay. Try number 6 on your own if you're comfortable and don't peek up here. Oh, that's right, you're not doing it this week. <laughs> you might change your mind. You never know. It's okay. I will remember it for next year. I'll be up in my head. And we're looking for kilograms of carbon dioxide? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Again, make sure your balanced equation is balanced first. So before I go any further, what numbers go there? Five and three. Okay. Oh wait, I just put wait. Lose my mind. <laughs> three. three. And one. And one. Good. If I get a number? Less than one or greater than one? Less than one, good. There's a seven after that four. Okay, so the homework, ones, twos, and threes, and
This is as ugly as it gets right here, guys, for a little while. Okay. So it combines bouncing the equations, bouncing the chemical formulas. What's that? The homework is the ones, twos, and threes. Yeah. And we'll talk about those on Friday, I think.